And you're live. Hi, and welcome to Conscious Living Radio. I'm Tasha Sims. And I'm Mark Curran. And of course, we're going Facebook Live, and then the show will be um, recorded, and then at 100.5 Wednesday night, 6 to 7 p.m. on Co-op Radio here in Vancouver. But thanks for joining us today. It's going to be a really interesting show because we love giving you practical tips. And to me, our guest today is all about that. Um, Her name is Sandy Dow. She believes in a world where people of all ages are taught basic self-care for the nervous system so they can support their own physical and mental health and become more of who they really are. She's a trauma-informed coach, somatic experiencing practitioner, author of the book Thriving in Chaos, and the creator of the coaching method, The Dow Effect. Over the past 40 years, she's worked in healthcare and addiction, as well as offering youth mentoring and performance coaching. And she shares her practices for building resiliency, which we hope to help you with today on podcasts, radio, social media, and YouTube. And she's drawing from her experience in somatic therapy, nervous system education, and spirituality, helping people empower themselves so you can manage anxiety and stress, which I got to say, welcome to the show, Sandy, but boy, these times, this is, you know, you popped into my mind. I know we've interviewed you before, but your book, Thriving in Chaos, to me is the perfect coffee table book because there's so many short two minute little exercises. It's not asking a lot. And yet the payoff in the book is so enormously effective and immediate. That's what I mean by coffee table book. It's like, pick it up, pick one, open the book and just do it. And all of a sudden you feel um, either energized or lifted or less, less anxious. And I'm really hoping today, I I love that you're joining us and I'm hoping that we can um, offer the listeners some of those exercises, walk them through it and, and also have a great chat. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Truly. I'm just so happy to be here to offer this. Like, oh. I use it myself all the time. I don't know. It's like you have to, right? I know. I know. So with um, Christmas, with COVID, with all the uh, challenging frequencies out there, what tool immediately pops into your mind that you would do on the daily? So forget about your anxieties off the charts, something that is actually maintaining your nervous system to... um, stay in a place of uh what what's a good word harmony or Mm -hmm. ease Mm -hmm. do you have a favorite do you have a tool that you would do daily that really you think is um helpful and would resonate there's a a few of them that i rotate through because they're all you know that quick easy variety but um the one that comes to mind the most um will will guide it right now is just orientation And I think specifically to this world of COVID that we're in right now, we, when we look around, especially if we're out in public, um, we, we're not going to feel safe because we've, there's people with half faces, we can't connect with eyes or facial expressions. So it really puts us into a much higher state of vigilance. Right. Mm -hmm. So our reptilian nervous systems are always scanning for danger. And so what I, I do oftentimes is I'll just throw my awareness into my lower body. And so you can just try it right now where you just, just put your awareness on your legs. You can grab your legs, maybe squeeze one of the long, strong bones in your legs. You can flex muscles in your legs. You can push against the ground, really feeling earth. Maybe do some movement. Can you wiggle your hips a bit? And what I find happens is when we get tense, when we get anxious, when we're feeling that you know threat around us, we're very much in our upper body and in our heads. So our heads have you know stories, and where we can feel constriction and sensation will be up high. So we lose you know chronically lose connection to the lower body and to that sense of groundedness. And so if I'm, you know, say in a lineup somewhere or, you know, even talking to somebody and, and maybe they're sort of angry or there's an energy that I 
don't feel comfortable with, I'll just go, well, I'm going down, I'm going down and I'll just press my feet against the floor and I'll just kind of like, oh yeah, I kind of squeeze my hips or whatever I can reach or whatever. And just, I, I just find in a few moments that I can just get myself back a little bit, maybe not totally, but just a bit. Um, and I notice for me, I'm very auditory. And oh. so I was hearing what you were saying before and going, yeah, that's interesting. But as soon as you said the words, my body's on board going down. Like it's got a sound to me where I'm going, going down. Like I, I love that. And I would probably add an accompanying inner voice that is that, that, that I resonate with or makes me happy. Those words make me happy. Well, that's sort of weird, but you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's, it's a verb that yeah. has emotion attached to it. Yeah. And it has movement, you yeah. know, um, there's a, there's a really big thing is as human beings, we're, we're actually still animals, right? And animals move all the time. And unfortunately, right. this whole COVID world has made us very quiet, yes. uh, contained, sedentary, you know, and that is so the opposite of what our nervous system needs to thrive. So, right. um, so that's, that's another big one as well. And what is it about facing these kinds of challenges that you think um, generates the most anxiety for people, such high anxiety, not knowing. What is it about that, that, as you say, we're humans, what about that creates such a, a, a sense of anxiety? Well, actually, uncertainty is one of the highest, creates one of the highest levels of anxiety in, in people, because it's like, there's no ground to stand on. There's no foundation. We just don't know what's next so we stay in that constant level of of threat so you know our nervous systems are always always just going to fall back into these threat responses whether it's you know the freeze or the fight or flight and and we see it all the time you know that get me out of here or the fight there's lots of that energy out there right now right and um uh -huh. so you know we're just when we're, we're constantly have this bombardment all the time i feel like our body of work, you know, when we get self care, but I think self care um, is not one size fits all. Uh, we really have to spend our time, I feel, figuring out what works for us because it, it isn't the same for everybody. You know, you might hear, well, I need to meditate more or I need to slow down. If maybe you have somebody who uh, has a lot of uh, flight and you're just like a, a type A and, you know, like this all the time, you know, I need to slow down. Well, that's not going to be safe for you. Right. So and, and somebody who's in a collapse freeze is a threat response. Um, they need movement, but it's going to be hard for them to get there. So I think one thing with, you know, any types of tools or tips with self-care is it's so individual, like all of our nervous systems are wired differently. There's no one size that fits all. And since we're talking about this, we had a guest on a few weeks ago who brought to our attention the fourth response, which I hadn't done much research in. But once I got so intrigued because it made such sense, fight, flight, freeze. And the fourth one, which is predominant for women, uh, tend and befriend. Have you heard of this? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it's so, all of a sudden I went, oh my God, so many people are doing that. And most of them women trying to placate whatever they, the perceived danger is. Mm -hmm. And also mm -hmm. having that connection of I've done something wrong. I must placate this situation or person who's angry. I mean, it's at, at the root of so many abusive kinds of dynamics and to understand it as a fight, flight, freeze response to trauma chain yeah. is a game changer. Totally. Right. Totally. I'm so glad you brought that up. That, that is, it's, it's a beautiful new one that it's nice to just become more aware of. And, and truly that's what I found so life-changing with the studying the nervous system is it just gave me so much more compassion for myself like, why yeah. am I doing this why am I here again why am I not yeah. able to or doing so much of or in this what I know really toxic response like knowing that it's coming from here like by the time we figure out we're in it it's already been triggered for a while you know it's already been very alive in our bodies so you know these tools kind of have a way of going in and circumventing of changing that, that relationship that going in and, and, you know, taking us out like diversionary things. Like another one um, is orientation. So when we're quite stressed, we lose connection with where we are. Like a lot of, you know, you have that sense of, Oh yeah, I don't I lost track of where I am. I don't even know where I am. And so mm -hmm. trying this together where we just, where you just turn your head 
in one direction and take a look. Notice what you see. Let your eyes really take in and what they see and going the other direction. And notice, can you track what happens as you just take a moment and look around, looking down. So just checking out the floor. And looking up, just scanning up at the ceiling. I notice I'm deep breathing in between each one as mm -hmm. if I'm receiving. Like for me, looking at something means I have to inhale it. Nice, yeah. yeah. And looking up really is a bit of a brain hack where it, we can't go into a lot of active thought while our eyes mm -hmm. are up here. Our eyes are a big connection with the brain. So when our mind is really busy and really spinning, sometimes just looking up, if it feels safe and comfortable for you, um, can be a really nice little hack to just calm the mind down and to settle. And then whenever I finish that, I just kind of say to myself, I'm here. Right. Yeah, so just to look around, because what we're doing is we're telling our brain that we're safe. Right. So your eyes are going, oh yeah, there's there's a doorknob and there's a light bulb and a plant. Um, if, if you're somewhere that isn't safe, well, this isn't going to work in the same way. So if you're in a living environment that that doesn't feel comfortable to safe for you, that orientation um, is going to be a whole different deal. And also some people can't handle a lot of visual stimulation. So again, you know, this isn't, this is very much about, I feel like all of these are about staying curious. Is this working for me? Mm -hmm. If not, you know, it's okay to stop and, and just kind of redirect. And you had another one around safety. Maybe you can offer right now too, where you were talking about imagining the state of mm -hmm. being safe. So that would be an eyes closed one. Can you take us through that while we're doing a couple of really cool um, mm -hmm. exercises? I'll tie that into a, uh, a story I have from this morning. I um, There's a forest close by me and uh, a beautiful tree there that I connect with often. And I was there this morning and I found this tree has a beautiful hollow in, in the trunk. And so when I go there, I just lay into it and I feel mm. very held. And maybe, yeah, if you want to close your eyes, you can go to my tree with me and or just do whatever feels comfortable. I'm going to your tree. I like it. Yeah, yeah. Right. So just, just settling in, feeling the support from your chair and leaning back if you can and just have that sense of being held in such a way that you can let go and surrender. That strong trunk is holding you. Feeling the earth, the strength of the earth and the compassion of Mother Earth holding you from below. And just hearing the sounds of forest, feeling cool air. It was rainy this morning and beautiful. And just allowing this to let you let go even a little bit more if that feels right. And along with the sense of surrender, I always believe that surrender and trust go together. To be able to surrender into this tree, we can also have a sense of trust that this tree and the earth can hold us. So trusting that it's safe to be held. Yeah, maybe yeah, noticing the breath, maybe a little sense of relief or a sense of letting go. So just taking your awareness now to the body, what's changed here in this moment? Because whenever we take it to the body, that's when we really strengthen it into the nervous system. So letting your system get used to that sense of safety, of letting go, of being supported. Yeah, nice. And so with that sense of what feels softer in your, in your body coming back into the room now, and see if you can stay connected with that. A little bit of softening. Mm -hmm the sense of relief that's lovely what in the you, body sorry go ahead what did you experience well i just it is relief it's also a kind of um security you, mm. you know it, it really is being held being secure and realizing how without that choice that's not necessarily how i feel all the time i feel like i've got to do a whole pile of stuff or to feel 
okay. And truthfully, it isn't. It's like, what do we take there? 30 seconds to lean into something where it's like my body is, is having the experience. I'm not making it up. And I think that's where imagination is such a good friend, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And especially in times like now where we can't maybe access those places. Right. The chances are in our, in our mind, there's some place we can access, like your place in nature, your favorite spot, where it might be the ocean or the mountains or the forest mm -hmm. and, and building that. And, and truly, I feel like this, this needs to be our homework right now, you know, as if we were going to school at the University of COVID, you know, well, what's it teaching us here is, is teaching us to find ways that, that really help us get that sense, that felt sense of, ah, oh, that little bit of letting go, that sense of relief, because it, it's, the default is always going to be going back to this, the vigilance, the, you know, the anxiety in the world like it's it's just out there and it's it, it's and we're not like I say able to access the things that normally support us so it's about I think finding a different path here and um and different tools that that work for us and it's like going to the gym you know um mm. we really do need to strengthen those muscles the first time we do this it might be like mm, yeah it's okay or it might even feel a bit uncomfortable or bumpy but you know doing it more often lets our nervous system know that it's safe because for a lot of things even just straight on meditation and a lot of those things or taking a deep breath it doesn't necessarily feel safe in our system so that's mm -hmm. why it's good to stay curious um, take it slow with these things and and then keep trying keep trying different ones until we do get that little bit of you know i saw your nice exhales your breath change you know when your body let go so we can find that state and then the more we get there the more our nervous system knows that it's safe and okay to feel calm because what we can get into right especially these days is like um in anxiety that is induced by relaxation and by calm interesting right so and oftentimes when you do relax for a few minutes you might go oh i'm in my head again and here i am and and and, and being compassionate and being okay with going wow my nervous system that was enough that was as long as i could hang out and for some people that might be just a second mm -hmm. and but even if you could just for a second feel that little bit of relief or letting go that's what we're going for here and then the more we do this we might get to five seconds or ten seconds and so also, this is a time where our interventions like this need to be short, not too long, because our capacity, our window of tolerance, tolerance isn't that great right now. So if I could, it keeps occurring to me, and this might be too hardball a question for some people, I don't know. But for me, what has been occurring a lot is an exploration of, like I've seen this as an opportunity. It may be challenging, but it definitely is an opportunity for me. So we're talking about safety and we're talking about trust. And I think the thing that I'm being called to trust, and I think everyone is on a spiritual level, is not knowing. So on a spiritual level, you actually, it's not about, if you, if you need to get the answers, then we're talking dogma and religion. We're not talking spirituality because in that realm, in that frequency of the mystery of it all, you are well and connected without any answers whatsoever. Right? Mm -hmm. So that state, it was occurring to me just yesterday, that state of being comfortable in the unknown, I kept thinking, what is it? Um, and especially with solstice coming up, which I understand is a real letting go of the frequency of the old paradigm, whatever that is for you that isn't working anymore. It's the letting go and either you do or you don't. But if you don't, it may be a bit of a struggle because the old one clearly doesn't work. We just have to, you know, either look inside or look outside and we can see it's not working. So my question to you is, if the old paradigm, whatever that is, is something that we were holding on to and we let go. We have to let go for something new. You can't hold on to the old and expect a new spiritual perspective or understanding. So I'm talking at that level. And that's what I meant by hardball. I'm moving really into this moment that you are going to let go and there is nothing there to hold on to. Maybe like a better metaphor would be the trapeze artist who trusts that there's going to be a pair of hands and they have to let go or because if you don't let go of that first trapeze, you're not going to be able to catch the hands of the next person. So it's that free floating. I mean, talk about anxiety, talk about fear. 
there is nothing there. You've jumped off the cliff, basically. Mm-hmm. Does that, do you have any, I, I don't know, like what does it, what resonates when we're opening the conversation up that way? Do you have any tips to help people trust? I don't even know if that's the right question to, to understand, how do you develop that trust to know that there will be a pair of hands or there will be a step that will appear as soon as you begin to move. You can't wait for it and then decide. That's what I'm trying to get at. Does that make sense? <clears throat> Very long question. Sorry, but I, I, I was percolating on that last night going, I really want to talk to you about this. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that. That's, that's beautiful because I think metaphorically in the big picture that this just so describes where we are right now. And, and it, it also speaks to that piece of uncertainty. Like being un- let it, being able to let go is like you're letting go into the unknown, and that's not a familiar thing for us, right? right? You know, and especially in this time again where we've been in constriction and in confinement, um, that it's just absolutely the opposite. So we're being asked to, you know, to let go and to trust, and you know that piece on surrender. Um, I, I think there's definitely something to work with, with the conscious mind there and, and just even playing with that. But what, as you were describing it, what I wanted, what I almost wanted to do be almost like working one-on-one in a somatic session is like, what did you notice? What did you feel as you were describing that? When I was talking about, so holding on is awful. I I don't like it. It's tight. It hurts. Every there's pressure. Yuck. And then as soon as I was talking, it shifted to the trapeze and was in the air because I was, as I was saying it, Mm -hmm. fear for sure, but excitement, heart excitement, but also a sense of fear and fear and anxiety are kind of, you know, they scratch the same little areas in your body. They do. They have the same, it'll be the same sensation. Um, It's just kind of how far it goes. Right. And, um, and where we are with it, but, but, but literally to almost like help ourselves prepare for these times is just touching into that a little bit. Right. So that, that fear, that anxiety, how do you know you felt it? Like, what were you feeling in your body that told you there was some fear? Well, I can still kind of feel it when I talk about it. It's a tingle. It's a something yeah. in the heart center. It's not tight and, con- and closed and congested, definitely open, but it's percolate. I, I love that word percolating. Yeah. There's yeah. movement, there's sparkiness to it, That's right. but a kind of, um, and now I just felt it in my belly. Like I love doing this stuff. Right. So I just sort of follow those sensations, but it's definitely excitement. Like, yeah. yes, I get a complete, yes, mm-hmm. I want this. Yeah. And I guess my and I think most people do too. They, I think people, if they understood, they would open to a new paradigm because as I say, the old structures, they've been so many things that are not helpful to all people at, you know, on this planet and animals and the climate and the environment. So many things that need to shift and change. And what we're talking about is oneself, right? Beginning this process in your own home where you can actually do something in terms of how we all then give back to the world and facilitate whatever it is we're going to move into. So I just wonder if there's something that occurs to you that's specific about, let's say, developing trust and Mm -hmm. comfort. That's the word I would use, comfort with that sensation of unknown, not knowing. Well, I mean, you basically said it is, and what I was gonna say is it's getting comfortable with our sensations. Because at the root of all of this, whenever we stop or wherever, you know, whether we're, however, whatever state we find ourselves in, there's a lot going on in here, Mm -hmm. lots. And, and we won't, and the more that that's going on, we tend to kind of check out and then we tend to be in our head and we'll dissociate because, and that's a great thing because it's so much to feel sometimes, you know, with the amount of things that we're going through every day and what we're hearing on the news. So what we are is very disconnected with this and yet this is like this is like the stop in our tracks piece right our body and our sensations will will take us down so um getting familiar and at ease with the sensations that are going on in our body i feel like um just getting curious you know i I love it's just all about the interruptions and the pauses in our day many times as we can and just notice what am i noticing right now Oh, okay. Let's see. I, I, my chest is tight. 
my stomach's in a bit of all my shoulders are up here and so we're just going to get curious and so mm-hmm. and just as soon as we put our awareness on it most of the time it just kind of goes oh mm-hmm. oh as soon as I noticed my shoulders up they've just dropped no and I just breathed a little more easily and so then we settle and so I feel like you know to thrive and do um, you know I believe we can thrive and that there's so much possibility and potential at this time coming up but it's hard when we're in these states right and, and we can't be hard on ourselves about being in these states because it's, it's just going on around us. But, and so again, it takes us back to our priorities and as best we can, you know, some people are just going to be in places where even accessing, you know, these little tools are going to be hard. Um, but, you know, doing our best we can, finding things that do help us in the moment, um, getting okay with sensations, the sensations that can stop us in our tracks. So that we can, you know, when we have those moments, we can ride that trapeze of, of excitement and be able to hold it. So the more that we can be able to just, okay, I'm going to hang out with this sensation here mm-hmm. for a minute. It feels really uncomfortable. And that gets into another piece that I wanted to speak to is it's, it's called, I call it movement medicine. Is that when we, a lot of this, you know, we just will feel like, oh, I'm, I'm feeling anxious. You know, anxiety is the tightness, the mm-hmm. constriction, the, you know, the thoughts, you know, it's so many, so many things at once, but we tend to want to sort of stop the anxiety, get away from the anxiety. We want, it's just so much to feel, but I think it's, it's just such a beautiful thing to reframe it and just to go, Hey, anxiety. Okay. You're here. All right. The stomach's in a knot. I can't breathe. All right. My neck's locked. Okay. Anxiety. Hi. So, uh, you know, how, what wants to happen here? How can we move with this? And Mm -hmm. just doing ancient medicine which is like bouncing and shaking like you know really getting into our bodies and flicking our arms um even for people who can't stand or might be in a wheelchair like how much movement can you get in so it's almost like letting the anxiety the sensations and all that move with you and then through you so you know getting that sense of here it comes and we're going to ride this and then my job is like i'll wiggle and i'll shake or i'll ah, make a noise and uh it's super powerful to move that it's it's a ton of life force that's stuck and constricted so it's so uncomfortable And so the more we stay in that constriction, the more uncomfortable it gets, the more we want to get away from it. So if we can just sort of invite in sensations and feelings and emotions and let them kind of flow through us, um, the more we're we're done as much as feels comfortable, which might just be a few seconds or maybe 10 minutes along of huge movements and jumping and bouncing and roaring. um, And then just stop and see what you notice, like what's changed. I always go back and just, and just notice that's the piece that, creates the neural pathways in your nervous system is like, oh yeah, this, oh yeah. Okay. Wow. I'm, I'm tingly, but I feel soft. You know, those types of things. It's like, how do I know I feel calmer? Those types of questions. So whatever it is that you're doing to help yourself. And the beauty in what you're sharing is nowhere in there. Is there a judgment that there's something wrong, right? You're starting with what is without the judgment, because if you started with, I got to get rid of this, this is awful you'd be missing the point. It's actually helpful to have that anxiety call you into your body. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so I think that, sorry, it can feel really awful. Yeah. Yeah. And, and super scary. And for some people, you know, who have a big trauma history, it will be so much that, you know, it's, it's truly, it it won't even feel safe to do that, you know? So it's, it's just really honoring all of us in our differences and where we're at and just staying super, you know, sort of being trauma informed. We're being very mindful of no matter what you feel, that's how you feel. And so that's right. for You you know, and so it, the, it might be a window this big, a millisecond and to not feel bad that, it's like that, you know, and you might see people doing all sorts of other things or in yoga class or in, you know, meditating or whatever. And it's just, there's so much self depreciation that can come from seeing how others are doing it. And it's just so needs to be honored. Like, this is my way and this is my reality. And so finding these little tiny windows of tolerance in that for some of these and seeing what helps. What do you think is at the root of that internal critic or saboteur who would be evaluating and comparing what's at the root of that what can people do that would 
uh, support them to dissolve or transform that inner energy to something more gentle and loving. I like using sort of the inner child, which, you know, might sound familiar to some people. So I just pretend that that's my little self seeing that. And, and as if you could imagine, because sometimes it's really hard to get into sort of self-care and self-compassion for ourselves. But if you imagine somebody put a little five-year-old on your doorstep who was having those same emotions and fears, and you had to help that little five-year-old, you'd stop everything and you'd maybe gather them up and give them a warm blanket and tea and stroke their hair. And, and so that's the kind of thing where I feel like that little voice, that's that five-year-old. And so if I'm hearing that that voice is just, oh, so, so struggling and in fear, that's my time to imagine that I can, I mean, I would be doing that to myself, right? It would be like, stop right now. You know, this is big, you know, it doesn't make sense, but this is how you're feeling. So, and then I would imagine, you know, I'm sort of gathering up my five-year-old, you know, when I'm really gathering up myself, like I say, it's kind of my, my doorway in to make it easier, right? So like, what does my little self mean right now? Does she really need to go out there and, I don't know, you know, get groceries or go look after someone when, she, when she's in such rough shape? No, you know, like she needs to stay here. She needs support. So I think that's, that can be a, a way in that we can use in our minds um, to help us help ourselves. Lovely. And let's talk about real kids, because I know a lot of people are at home oh, yes. um, with children who are struggling and it's, it's different. I mean, they're a whole, depending on the age, but so much of the development, yes, the family is important, but so is contact with peers and with friends and with the physical distancing and um, the restrictions. I wonder if there isn't um, something you can offer both the adults to do with their kids or together with their kids that would be helpful um, during this time? I really feel like all of these exercises and things I'm offering, they're very much, they're totally child-friendly and totally um, doable for parents. I, I feel like I call it planting seeds. It's kind of what I did with my kids is just kind of drop little things or or even you know if your kids are a bit older and a bit judgmental it's like this is what I'm doing today this is kind of helping me you know I'm just um and then and then letting them watch or observe and then ideally you know maybe they'll join in so um not necessarily making it about them oh we got it we're gonna do and this it's a little and you know it's easier but um just saying like this is like super important I've learned some things and I'm trying this out for myself and it's I kind of like it and so I'm gonna do it here if you want to join me that's fine and and so that that whole idea of movement medicine like bouncy breaks you know what whatever that might look like so bouncing around, jumping around, um, shaking off. Like if you've given yourself a sanity break by putting the kids on a cartoon or something like that, that time after um, is, is just going to be, you know, you know, they've had all that stimulation and mental stimulation and they've been very quiet. So just getting up and jumping around and bouncing and going crazy um, will help offset some even some behaviors that, that might come up, that sort of the post cartoon thing that maybe people have seen or yeah. just anytime like schoolwork or, you know, kids that are just online for school, it's just so heartbreaking. You can't get them to move enough, right? So as much as you can get them to do the, like the bouncy breaks, you know, and get some music on and go crazy and how yeah. fun that mom and dad would go crazy with them, right? And so they just let it out and, um, and then maybe for bedtime, you know, it's just like, oh, let's just look like orient them to where they are. Like fuzzy blankets, I'm all about the fuzzy blankets because, you know, kinesthetic orientation. So like touching something that feels good. So where's your blanket? Oh, I'm gonna sit with you and read a story and here's the blanket, let's just touch it for a minute. Like right. feel it in your fingers. Like, do you like that fuzz or do you like your stuffy better? Like what, one feels better and all of a sudden they'll just be feeling fuzzy things and so will you. Right. So again, you're, you're orienting to your environment around you and like, Oh, you're in the car and you're about to get out. And it's like, listen to the rain. Wow. I love the sound of rain. And so you're stopping, you're interrupting, you're pausing and you're stopping. And like, wow, when I listen to the rain, I notice like, Oh, oh I breathe different and my shoulders drop and, and I, I see the little yeah. bubbles down there and it just yeah. makes me feel good. Do you feel good? How do you know you feel good? Like what changed inside of you? Right. So just finding the moments, it's just interruption, staying curious, invitation for little things like that. Um, 
can can make a big difference. I love your modeling of good mom. I want one like that. (laughs) And you know what else is cool is, as you say, you're giving it to yourself. So a a parent who's on overwhelm um, in listening to this interview going, oh, no, not another thing I have to do. But the truth is you're giving it to yourself, to your own inner kid, too, as you say. And, And the benefit is not just for your children. It's for you, too, as you're in that resourceful state, right? Mm -hmm. Well, and the interesting thing too, I'm glad you mentioned that is with, with parents, if you don't have time for the kids, do it for you because your kids are plugged into you like uh, electrical sockets, right? Like children will always attune to their caregiver. So however you are, you'll see that reflected in your children, unfortunately, you know, and it's not to just be hard on parents, but it's just the truth of it. They're wired to you. So if they're really going wild, just take a moment, just breathe, put your hand on your heart and just like, how am I right now? You know, and even if you can take that little pause before responding to them, you're responding to yourself first. And so if you can respond to yourself first, just feel your hand on your heart, press it in for a moment, just feel your breathing in there, just look around just for a second before you respond to what's happening, you'll have a different response. It'll be a little bit softer, you'll have time to sort of engage and and regroup throw your energy down your lower body, just take a second, right? And so these, you know, things for parents, it's, they're essential to the parents, right? And then you'll find if you can find ways, your kids, you're going to see the ripple effect in your family, right? Right. Even even the animals. (laughs) Well, and, and another effect, it seems, or I'm hearing lots of people complaining about COVID pounds, um, you know, people have used food or alcohol or whatever it is during this time in excess, perhaps more than usual, because we don't have our usual kind of interactions and things that that keep us busy. So I'm wondering, people are all talking about, um, you know, trying to lose COVID pounds. Do you have a metabolism, something that stimulates the metabolism or do any of the, the exercises, you know, would they be helpful in this quest so you don't become, uh, you know, some vigilant kind of, you know, I think people when they go on diets and get really extreme and that's why they don't work, right? Because it's like, I must do this willpower and then they fail. So that's why I'm asking the question in alignment with the nervous system, because I think there might be a state that would be more conducive to getting healthy physically rather than the, that old paradigm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's such a that's such a good one, right? Because it's just another thing we're dealing with right now. It's like, oh my gosh, how did I get like this? I'm having wine every night and you know, eating sugar all the time. And and so knowing that those types of things are, are a way of self-soothing and self-comforting. I mean, truly they are. In that moment, we're getting a little bit of comfort from that, right? So having enormous compassion for yourself for being in that place. That's the biggest thing is just that self-compassion and even seeing it like there's that little me wanting um, candies again, you know, there's Mm -hmm. that young me just feeling so aching and so alone. She's, you know, having me, you know, go for the wine. And um, so anything where we can even take a moment before we um, say, go to indulge in, in something like that, just even, going like, oh yeah, here I am looking for the comfort and just stop for a minute. Just what do I notice right in this moment? If you can take that millisecond and just notice, you know, like where is that desire, that craving coming from? And there, you don't have to stop it because we don't want to get in battle with that. So just being really gentle and just really compassionate, even though I, I want this right now and it may not be the best for me, I forgive myself and I'm okay with myself, even though I'm having this. So you almost go to the place where you bless what you're doing, um, which is a really different energy, right? Than doing it and like, you know, doing it from a really highly stressed state, Um, doing what you can to eat in peace. So maybe without Mm -hmm. the news, um, without heavy conversation, maybe just, you know, taking a moment to put on soft music and, you know, look at your food and bless it and be grateful for a moment changes the way your body uh, can digest that food, right? And That's so beautiful. Yeah. And so food, you know, food is our medicine, right? But it, it, it our body has to be ideally in um, a more of a relaxed state to be able to process it in the right way. So that's just so important with that piece. Again, being compassionate with ourselves. Um, 
even taking a moment to visualize yourself like, oh, can you imagine, how to imagine a whole day where I, I, I ate mindfully, you know, and I ate compassionately and I still had a little bit of chocolate, but I really enjoyed my chocolate, you know, yeah. and, you know, so just even holding that vision, um, oftentimes right now I find I go into bed and it's just like, whoa, that was a lot of stuff going on today. And I just have to be so mindful to try and okay, all right, um, and what am I grateful for? And also just holding it, just a snapshot of the next day, like going to bed and going like, oh, I did pretty good today, you know? Yeah. Like I, I remembered to, to do some things. I, I, I took a bit more time for myself, like just little bits, you know, even if I just was, a, you know, I had a little bit uh, more flow and ease in my day, like that's a big deal. And holding that intention, you know, the sort of the day before, imagining it, you know, as if you're in bed the next night and you just did it just the tiniest bit better can be super powerful, right? It's like you're giving yourself a little, a guiding rod for, okay, this mm -hmm. is where we're going here. Right. There's a few exercises in the book that um, I fell in love with. Um, I knew, but I, they've just become daily habits. So I'm wondering if we can add those to our conversation today. One was, I mean, they're all so simple, but thymus thump. Oh, right. For, for energizing. Can you maybe show us that one and we could all do it? I, I love it. I use it all, all the time in between okay. clients. It's just constant. It's so good. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the Tarzan thing, right? Mm -hmm. So you're making a little fist. If that feels comfortable for you, you could also rub if it, if it, if the thumping was too much, but so stimulating the thymus, not going to do it too hard because I can't talk. Right? Um, th th there's just so many benefits to stimulating the thymus. I what always does the thymus do? Maybe you could define that first for our listeners. What is it? Well, I'm not the best on science dialogues, but where I, I use this the most is if I, if I feel jittery and rattled, like certainly if you feel shocky, like something just happened, like I'll go right here and I'll just kind of massage or I'll thump here. And it, it's, it just kind of helps calm me. And, and I tend to rub under the collarbones as well, because there's a lot of acupressure, acupuncture meridians that go mm -hmm. through this K27 point, this point right here. So rubbing this whole area um, can just open up meridians, just open up energy flow. So this, this, all these pieces right here and, and it's kind of, it's individual as well. So doing that might do something for you. It might do something different for me, but um, thanks for the reminder on that. Oh, I love that one. Yeah. Um, the other one, which is kind of somewhat similar, slapping yourself awake. It sounds violent, but Maybe you can demo that for us because that um, it's when you've got the slump, right? It's, it's kind right. of your. Yeah. Yeah. I put a whole section of my book around energizing because when, when we're, when our physiology is so stressed and taxed all the time, even if we might have this anxiety buzz underneath, we're so depleted. Our adrenals are depleted and we're just, you know, so, and there'll be times when that hits us and we're just like, oh, mm -hmm. and so, you know, hopefully at that time we can rest, but a lot of times we're still pushing through that. So um, the different types of energizing exercises are, are really helpful. And so, you know, the movement one that I talked about before bouncing and, and shaking and, and the slapping one was just a random one that I found and it's ancient Chinese medicine one. And it's, you know, literally just taking your hand and just patting up and down your limbs, your chest, and it, it opens up again, the energy and your lymphatics. Mm -hmm. So we're not moving, our lymph is not flowing, right? And we can have- all do you, Mark. Yeah, we can all do each other, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so, nice. and that's another one where after doing that, you're just gonna feel different. You're gonna feel more yeah. energized. Yeah, and, and again, how fun to do that with your kids are going off to school. Exactly. Oh, oh, I'm gonna yep. have a good day. I'm gonna feel or you so could do each other. Oh, you could yeah. do each other. That'd be fun game. Oh yeah. Just whacking each other all over. And so yeah, yeah, making these things fun. And then, and, and noticing, helping them notice the difference where they're, you know, slumped over their breakfast to, you could even do that on your kids while they're eating. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. On yeah. you know, their back, right. down their arms. What do you notice now? I feel buzzy and tingly and I'm smiling. What do you notice? Yeah. It's so taking it back to yourself. Okay. And one more, I don't want to run out of time without this one. Cause I have loved the figure eight. Oh, really yeah. effective for me. Can you maybe teach us that and tell well, us what the benefits? How do you use it? Um, I just breathe yeah. and and it's like part of my meditation oh, because yeah. it brings my body. 
it feels like an energetic frequency adjustment to me yeah. that helps me get centered in a meditative state more quickly. That's how I use it. But I can't remember what you said about it. Do you want to add to that and show us how to do it? Yeah, it's it's another super powerful energy medicine thing. Donna Eden has a whole book about energy medicine and some of these are from, from hers, but you can make a little pointer finger gun and uh, and just draw going up through the middle, some figure eight circles. And it's a super powerful energy cycle. I mean, we've seen the, you know, this, um, this figure eight symbol going back thousands and thousands and thousands of years. So, so many of these. Yeah, like on its side, it's infinity, right? Yeah, it's yeah. the infinity symbol. And so, you know, are there cultures long before <laughs> us that were tapped into these various energies and energy medicine states and, uh, and so this one, literally, if you had a something that was hurting or a burn or done it over my kids' wisdom teeth, they had pulled like just doing little figure eights over an area that's um, in pain or a fracture or something like that. It, it is a really powerful energy healing vortex that can come from that. And it, it's amazing how it can speed up healing and just also just in you know, you described it well, just synchronizing your own energies because this is alive in us. So it's kind of like we're waking it up. It's yeah. interesting that on its side, it's easy for me. Yeah. And straight up, it's not. Interesting. To, to huh? go in the, I, I get confused almost. My brain is like, am I going up? Am I going, oh, but I'm going down now. Like there's too much up and down. But on its side, I don't feel that. Yeah, interesting. Anyway. Um, okay, that's so cool. I know we only have a few minutes, so I want to make sure listeners know where to find out more about you. I am literally, can you all see that? Is that good? That is Sandy's book, Thriving in Chaos, Two-Minute Stress Management Tools for Anxiety, Stress Relief, and Increased Confidence. And honestly, you guys, you're going to tell us where to get it, Sandy. But to me, having this book lying around, um, the best thing for me and people who just pick it up and they open it up and they go, oh, well, we open to slap yourself awake. But let me see what else. Supercharge Your Creativity. Um, ear love. Oh, that's a very easy one, right? Where you start, mm -hmm. like, these are simple things to do. It's not asking a lot of you. And yet mm -hmm. the payoff, what you experience in return feels so high for the effort that's asked. And that's what I really appreciate about it, Sandy. It's not here, big, huge course, you know, that is a, a commitment of six weeks. It's like two minutes and yeah. you'll feel better. Exactly. So tell us more about where to find out um, information about you and where they can get the book. Mm -hmm. um, Sandy sandydow.com is my website and um, you can sign up for my news newsletter. I've had a bit of a pause on it, but I want to get it going again with more videos and more up-to-date things that are just helpful for people. Um, I'm on social media, not the biggest social media person myself. I'm just kind of go with the flow, but I'm on Instagram and, and on Facebook and um, I really like connecting with people and hearing from them. Um, my book is, is on Amazon and then um, there's a, then you can get a digital copy. Uh, anybody who's listening today, if they want a, a digital copy for my book, just message me and uh, I'll send you one a little Christmas gift. And thanks for you guys for um, helping to promote. I'm just really all about, I just, like I say, if, if more of us knew how to do these simple things, I think we could just really, um, number one, feel more hopeful, um, because I think it's just so important to take this back for ourselves. Like I can do this, I can help myself because right now it, it doesn't feel like we have much support in the world and, and, and it's self-reliance, right? Like I think those are huge things to teach our kids and to learn for ourselves. And we're going to have all these links. I know Mark's got them up on Facebook. We'll also have them um, on consciouslivingradio.org, where the podcast will be after the show airs on Wednesday, 6 to 7 p.m. You can again hear it on podcast and find the links to access Sandy and the book, Thriving in Chaos. Mm -hmm. So we're almost out of time. Is there anything that you feel from your heart to the world that you um, would love to communicate, would love to share with our listeners? Mm. You know, I think... In my experience with the tree again this morning, I was just so reminded like nature's nature's our teacher, you know, the earth, the elements. And, and just being with that was just this reminder that like, it's okay. 
like, it's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. You know, like all this is going on on our planet and there's still just trees just hanging out, you know, mm-hmm. the little stream is still running and the birds, you know, get up and fly this way in the morning and this way at night. And it's like, so for me, that's my orientation. I just keep going back to that and I go like, look, it's okay. Like we're just being shown all the time. We're being held and yes, our planet's going through transition as well, but there's so much out there for us. And I really feel like our planet's there for us. Like, you know, our ancestors and, you know, whatever we believe in, this is the time now to get up close and personal with all of that because we need it on all levels, right? On, on this mm-hmm. level, but the spiritual level and, um, and calling it all in. And, and isn't that a beautiful thing, right? And um, the last piece too is like, there's so much dark in, in my meditations and that I just, it's just like, oh, what is this about? And I'm just reminded all the time about there can't, you know, be the dark without the light, right? And so even though there's, that's so strong, this is just as strong, it can't not be, right? right. So I'm, I'm just like, you know, orienting myself to that, to the light, to the joy, to the pleasure, to, you know, taking a moment and just oh, being with that tree. So, you know, if there was any one takeaway, you know, just orienting to what is the white or the light to you, you know, love and peace. And, and then what do you notice inside? And then just going forward in your day with that. And, and we're, we're creating this together. I love it. It's, and it, it is that it's no longer the dawning of the age of Aquarius. It is on I December know. 21st, I know. the age of Aquarius, which right? you know, it's time. This is what we're all we're up to. And um, love is all you need. Really, the frequency. Yeah. And yeah. and with all of this, it's a remarkable time to be on the planet. You know, yeah. we're really here together going through something huge. So we're on for the ride, right? We are. Stories will be told about this time. Yeah. It's it's you get to define what character you are in that movie or in that novel of That's 2020, true. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you joining us today. Thank you. And thank you for putting that book together and all those exercises. Because as I say, I find it hugely, hugely effective, valuable, and short and sweet, which is also something that people appreciate, I think, and need right now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And thank you, Mark, for holding space over there. Um, It's been fun today. Okay. Well, thanks, everyone. It was my pleasure. The one thing I just want to throw in real quick, I loved your metaphor, Tasha, about the uh, the trapeze artist, because I, I was getting a visual of that and that letting go. And it got me thinking of like, you know, even somebody, you know, parachute people, you know, the, when they jump that, you know, the first time and the answer that kept coming back to me about letting go is how do you do that? And to me, it was practice. You have to practice letting go, practice letting go and knowing that it'll all work out. Yeah. And I know in my experience, because I used to hang on to stuff really tight, you know, I still hang on to some things. I'm not going to lie about that. But, you know, I've, I've learned that in letting go, there's that there's that moment where it's like, oh, my God, you want to hang on again. But you just have to practice knowing that it's OK and right. you're going to be caught you know so thank you for that because i really i I went into that one for a while actually Mm -hmm. thanks mark yeah okay everyone we'll catch you next week um happy holidays i guess this Mm -hmm. is going to be out just before uh the hopefully you get a break i'm getting a break so i'm very very excited um and have a vibrant i don't know that i'll be speaking to you before new year's have a vibrant fresh new year filled with The light is coming. It's getting lighter. And Mm -hmm. um, if we can all hold and join hands on that and breathe around that, it's Mm -hmm. symbiotic. We're all here and we're all together. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Thanks, Sandy. Bye.